Hello comrades, recently a statue of Frederick Ingalls was erected in the city of Manchester in England. This upset conservative MEP Daniel Hannan, who wrote an article entitled We Wouldn't Celebrate a Statue of Hitler, so why Ingalls? He starts his article with a stupid joke about a statue of Hitler being erected in Manchester because he had supposedly spared the famous Midland Hotel during the Blitz. This joke is not only idiotic but also made in very poor taste. Manchester was almost completely destroyed by the German Air Force during the Blitz, with whole families being wiped out. Ingalls, by contrast, lived in Manchester for years and wrote about the area extensively in his early work, The Condition of the Working Class in England, where he condemned the conditions workers had to live under. So, Hitler's only connection to Manchester is that he tried to flatten it during the Second World War, Ingalls, by contrast, lived there and showed that he cared for the working class inhabitants of the city. In the next paragraph, Hannon repeats the old lie that Marx never worked for a living, which is total nonsense. In fact, Marx worked so hard that he got the unwanted attention of the Prussian, Belgian and French governments who closed down his papers and forced him into exile. Even then, Marx never stopped working. He worked as the European correspondent to the New York Daily Tribune and on Mar and Marxist literature, which has inspired millions. Hannon then goes on to say that both Ingalls and Hitler never personally murdered anyone, but both engendered millions of deaths. This is another moronic argument. Ingalls never ordered the execution of one single person. Hitler, on the other hand, ordered the extermination of an entire religious minority. Sie werden sich nur erinnern an die Reichsverfassung, in der er erklärte, wenn das Judentum sich etwa einbildet, einen internationalen Weltkrieg zur Ausrottung der europäischen Rassen herbeiführen zu können, dann wird das Ergebnis nicht die Ausrottung der europäischen Rassen, sondern die Ausrottung des Judentums in Europa sein. Hannon then goes on to claim that communism is the most destructive ideology of all time, claiming that whilst the Nazis murdered 17 million, communists murdered 100 million. This is wrong. The German invasion of the USSR resulted in the death of 20 million Soviet citizens. And Hannon wants to claim that the Nazis only killed 17 million? An utter joke. Of course, he then claims that communism has murdered 100 million people, a ridiculous figure that defies demographical and historical evidence. Indeed, even some of the contributors of the Black Book of Communism have distanced themselves from that ridiculous figure. Hannon then claims that communism and Nazism lead to similar outcomes, which is wrong across the board. Indeed, if Hannon wants to compare something to the Third Reich, then he should compare it to his own beloved British Empire, which was based on racial superiority, imperialism, and repression of so-called inferior races. Marxism, by contrast, is about liberating the working class from their capitalist oppressors, which is totally different from the philosophy of the British Empire and the Third Reich. Hannon then claims that the likes of Pol Pot were fulfilling Marxist ideology, a statement not backed up by any evidence. He claims that Marx and Ingalls did not view human beings as individuals. That is wrong again. However, they did argue that workers should collectively act together rather than alone when fighting for their rights. That is just common sense anyway. He then claims Marxists would eradicate anyone that stands in the way of their idea of progress. That is almost true to every ideology. Indeed, his party has been accused of doing just that to disabled people. Marxists, on the other hand, want to break the power of the capitalist class. In the next paragraph, he claims that in 1990, broken shells were everywhere, and states there has been no successful Marxist governments. Of course, he forgets the fact that communism transformed formerly feudal backwaters into modern industrialized states. Indeed, under the often maligned German Mao, Chinese life expectancy increased from 36 to 65 in the space of 26 years. By contrast, the restoration of capitalism in Russia led to one of the biggest collapses in life expectancy in history. And that is basically it. Now Britain is full of statues of Queen Victoria, Cecil Rhodes, and symbols of the dark days of the British Empire. 
an empire that slaughtered millions. Yet here's Daniel Hannon sobbing about a statue of Ingalls being erected in Manchester. Nothing more ridiculous. Before I go, I would like to give a shout out to both Kevin Logan and Batgo Dominicus, whose channels were recently taken down unfairly. In times like this, leftists need to support each other. So I hope you all consider supporting these guys.